All right, so for part A, we're supposed to solve for x. x is down here, and x is an angle. So in order to solve for the angle, first thing we need to do is look from our angle, and we need to see that, okay, opposite my angle is 5, so that's my opposite side, and 7 is the hypotenuse. We know that because 7 is right across from the right angle. Anything right across from the right angle is the hypotenuse. So if I'm dealing with opposite and hypotenuse, it's going to be O over H, and that is my sine ratio. You can check that from the previous page. So the way I set this up is I say, okay, the sine of my angle X is equal to my opposite, which is 5, divided by my hypotenuse, which is 7. First thing I need to do is I need to work out 5 divided by 7. So I go 5. divided by 7, I get 0.71. So then I know that sine x is equal to 0 0.71, we'll say 0 0.714. So 0 0.714 is equal to sine x. <clears throat> what I need to do is I need to solve for my angle. In order to solve for angle x, what I have to do is I have to use the inverse of sine. So I need to use sine to the negative 1. So that means we're going to have to use, on some calculators they have a shift button, on other calculators they have like a second function button. And we're going to have to use that before we hit sine. So I would say that's equal to sine to the negative 1 of 0 0.714. You don't necessarily need to write out this step, I'm writing it out just to show you how it works. So on my calculator, I have a second function button. Your calculator might have the same button. And if you look on sine, cosine, and tan, each one has a sine to the negative 1. Cos has a cos negative 1. Tan has a tan negative 1. Those are all the inverses. To access those, you press your second or your shift button. So I press second, sine. Then I type in 0.714. On your calculators, some of them want you to put in 0.714 first then do the second sign. It depends on your calculator. You have to check your calculator and try it to make sure it works. Again, you have to make sure your calculator is in degree mode. So I get an answer of 45.56 and that's going to be in degrees. So angle X is equal to 45.56 degrees. So that's how we solve for an angle. The second one is here. This time I'm given my angle, but I do the same thing. I try to figure out what I'm given and what I'm looking for. This time I'm looking for x down here. So x down here is actually the opposite. 13, since the right angle is here, 13 is not the hypotenuse. The hypotenuse is over here, which we're not given or we're not looking for. So we're not even concerned with the hypotenuse. We're actually given the adjacent. And the adjacent is like right next to the angle. The opposite is, of course, right across from the angle. So this time I'm dealing with my opposite over adjacent, and this is my tan function. So I set it up exactly the same way, only this time, instead of going tan x, I go tan of my angle because I'm actually given my angle this time. So I go tan of 25 equals my opposite is x over my adjacent, which is 13. Tan of 25, we have to work out on our calculator. So we type in tan, 25, or 25 and hit tan. Most of them go tan, 25. We get 0.466. So I change that to 0 0.466. And that's equal to x over 13. And then you just have to do some algebra. How do I solve for x? Well, I got to multiply by my 13. I got to multiply by 13 there. So I times that one by 13, and I get 6.06. .06. So 6.06 .06 is equal to x. So solving for angles, we don't have to use the shift or the second function button. Or sorry, solving for sides, we don't have to use this, the shift or second function button. The one above, when we're solving for an angle, we have to use the inverse of sine to solve for the angle. 
So when we don't solve for an angle, when we're just solving for a side, we'll just basically be using algebra. And that's how to solve for angles and for sides.